guys and I'm here to show you how I did my super cool helmet for my Sarah 2 cosplay I hope you like it I put a lot of effort in that helmet and it was the first well this was the first armor that I have ever done so I hope you like it and if you are new I think it will be more useful for you but if anyone find this useful that's awesome too so Hello guys, I think it's time to start with this tutorial. So the first thing you must look for is a wig cap. This will help you to put all your hair together. Well, if you don't have like long hair like I do, well that one wasn't really long, maybe you don't need to use it. The next step is just take some plastic wrap paper, plastic wrap and just wrap your head with this. Make sure to cover like all the surface where you want to put your your pattern like yeah after this i just go for my duct tape you know what duct tape is awesome so you just start putting some duct tape uh the same that with the plastic wrap everywhere where you think you are going to make a pattern like the surface you want to cover with something that's where you put some tape next step is trying to trace the shape that you want in my case I think the shape that I want is a little bit weird but that's what I wanted so I'm just gonna do the half because well this has some symmetry so I just need to trace the shapes twice and put it together Now I'm just gonna retrace the shapes that I think that need to go more straight and maybe create some subdivisions in this huge part so it will be easy for me to put them together when I have to glue and bend the things. So now you can see I'm putting some horizontal lines to know like where the different parts connect to make sure that I'm doing it okay. This is not like mandatory but it really helps you when you have to put everything together so i really recommend to make these guidelines in your pattern the next thing that i notice is well this is going well but i'm a little bit i need to make this line a little bit straight so now it's looking good but still i need i think to subdivide this part a little bit more to make the pattern more flat so okay now once your pattern is split you have to trace it over the foam uh, the only thing that you have to keep in mind is that you have to give a little bit extra space to your pattern because well the foam takes a little bit of the pattern so if you don't do this you have the possibility that it will be smaller than you expect so I'm not exactly sure how much I took but as you can see it's not really that much and I also trace the guidelines that I did before and write one two to know which part I'm connecting with which part I know maybe it's obvious but for me it can be a little bit confusing so I do this with all the parts and I do every part twice Bye.
So now it's time to put everything together. As you are seeing, I'm applying some contact cement where I'm gonna put the parts, the parts together. So the one I'm using is like a page contact cement, but usually read the instructions. If you read it, it says for what materials it works. Uh, this one, it's okay. I know that there are other brands that are better, but this one is the one that I usually found. And if you follow the instructions properly, it kind of works well. Um, sometimes I don't wait for the glue to be totally dry, so that's when I have troubles putting everything together. This one you have to wait like... Before it's completely dry, it's like a weird state, usually it's 15 minutes uh, for that. So if you wait for that and you put it together, it will be okay. As you see now, I'm having troubles because I didn't wait the time that I needed. With the other part, I wait the time that I needed, but because it's like really curvy, it wasn't really staying together. So what I did was start with the part that is working and then slowly, slowly keep bending and you see everything start coming together. You just have to be careful and be patient, especially be patient. Um, sometimes I use like the heat gun because I'm curving the foam it helps the foam to get into a shape that I want so this is the process that I apply in the whole helmet so I, you will see how I just keep bending and using the heat gun and maybe cutting some parts that I discovered that I didn't want them to finish that way When I'm happy with my shape, I just try it on. As you can see, the helmet is a little bit bigger, but that's okay because we have to take into account that I'm gonna use a wig, so the wig will fill that extra space that I have. And then I proceed, I go for some filler and start putting in the parts that I think it will be useful to make it smoother. After we put the filler, I just took some sandpaper and start sanding the filler when it's dry. If it's not dry, you're just going to do a mess. I'm talking from experience, so just wait for it to be dry and sand it not too hard because if you do it too hard, it will fall down. After this is done, it's time to go back to have more details in this helmet. So I just took some paper that follows the shape of the helmet and I'm trying to do some kind of volume area here but I'm not completely sure how I'm gonna do it so first I'm just tracing the shape that I want and as you can see I do it many many different shapes and then I go for the details and when I'm happy I'm said okay let's time to cut it out But I'm just gonna put together this with some tape later. But as you can see, that's the shape that I want. And again, I'm just gonna mirror this. So I trace these shapes into my foam, making sure that I'm having the orientation that I want. <laughs> just for me to be easy to follow, really. 
Um, then I just cut it out using my Sacto knife. Um, this time was easier because I had a new blade, so it was easier to take out. But if your blade is not really sharp, you're gonna have some bumpy edges. So now I'm trying to see if that is the, the height that I want and if it looks okay and it looks kind of okay so I think it's time to continue. I use my Dremel to sand the edges so I have a smooth surface and this will help me when I'm trying to put this together with the glue. After the sanding is done, I'm just gonna again put my contact cement in the surface that I want to bond together and wait for some minutes and when it's dry, let's just put it together, use the heat gun to give it a more curvy shape so it's not just a flat pattern and as you can see it's starting to look like pretty cool. After this I can put my new shape into the helmet so I'm just gonna again apply contact cement and uh, when it's dry we just have to put it together. Now I'm going to apply again some filler in the connection between the, our new part and the base for the helmet because it looks like very bumpy and I don't really want to sand it so I'm just going to apply some filler in that part and in the curves of my new part. Um, after this, it's when it's dry, I start tracing the details that I want to make later with the iron welder so and when this is done I use my iron welder to create this depth surface that I want So here it is, my helmet almost done I would say. So now we do a little bit of sanding as always to have the smooth surface that we usually want. Now it's time to seal and paint. So the first part for sealing is I'm usually just put some wood glue and wait for it to dry and put some more and wait for it to dry so as you can see you have to put good glue everywhere so this is how it looks I think after one layer it looks pretty shiny pretty cool I love it then I noticed that I still have some parts that are not really that smooth so I put a little bit more of filler to have the surface that I really want to have And then again, let's do the sanding and I don't know if you noticed, but it really looks more smooth and super cool. So when this is done, I apply more layers of glue. I usually do three layers. And we wait for that. It's a kind of long process because you have to wait for dry, to dry. Then we can start 
having the color base for the helmet. So the one that I use is white. Usually I have to apply more than one layer of white and in general I apply also three layers to make the color look uniform. After the base is done and it's completely white as I like it, I start uh, painting some other details that in this case is red. When the color red is done, I wait a little bit for it to dry and then I create a darker red color and start applying in some parts to create some shadows. This will pop up this red detail a, a little bit more. Usually the shadows that I apply are in the edges and in the path that I trace with the, with the iron welder. Then I start painting some orange in the last detail that I had in this part of the helmet. I'm gonna do almost the same that I did with the red. First I apply my orange and then I create a new darker orange to add a small shadow in the part that was there. And that's how you make the details pop out a little bit more. Now this helmet has some extra details that I'm creating right now, it's just like a long stripe that came out from the helmet so that's why I'm trying to figure it out. I know the shape because I have the drawing that follows the shape but I'm not completely sure about the long that it should be so that's why I'm every time adding a new sheet of paper to keep tracing my pattern until I'm satisfied with the shape that I had. This requires a little bit of drawing and changes, but if you know what kind of shape you want, it's easy to figure it out. If you are not completely sure, I recommend to go to the basics, like in my case I kind of trace like a kind of rectangle I would say, and then just give it some colors and some details after I have the basic shape that I want. Also remember to try these things over your body to know that the proportions you are creating are good because sometimes if we don't do that we think like it's something big but when you wear it or compare it to your body it's kind of a small and it can pass the other way maybe you create something too huge so remember to always have a reference and usually your reference is your own body and a photo of the project that you are doing the next thing that you have to do as always is trace your pattern over the foam in this case I have a very thin foam, I don't remember how thin it was but it was like 1-2 millimeters and I noticed like this foam doesn't have like the consistency to keep the shape that I want but I'm gonna solve that later, I promise. So now I'm just sealing the foam to be able to paint it and it's a really long process as you can see, like this part is very long. But it's just patience, you just have to keep painting, keep drying, keep waiting for some things sometimes. But it's okay, like you don't really have to rush. And if a custom is not done for the convention you want to use it, it's okay, there will always be another convention to go. 
or another time to program a photo shoot like I did come crushing for this custom and it was it really make you feel tired and burn out a little bit after this so I really recommend don't do it after that I'm just applying my white painting so I have the white color that I want um, this detail doesn't really have more details like it's just the shape and it's white color so it was pretty easy to accomplish as you can see like this armor this detail is almost done I just need to create a second one and solve like the connection with the helmet for this I'm gonna just put some velcro and that's how I'm gonna keep these details the other thing that I have to do is put a second stripe of velcro to have the curve that I want so as you can see now I'm adding my first part to make sure that it can hold my details I think I had to add like two small stripes in this helmet but at the end it works like a charm and as you can see it's very good now I'm tracing in what part of my new piece I have to add the second part of helmet so it has a beautiful curve that I'm trying to create and as you can see I'm just putting my second stripe of velcro in my helmet and now I have my beautiful shape and my two details there and it looks kind of awesome don't you think so? what if we add a horn? well we're gonna start doing that and the first thing that I did was trace the pattern that I want to follow so for the horn I really struggled making the pattern that I want because sometimes it was too short sometimes it was too thin so you will see me changing this pattern a lot and um, at the end I got the shape that I want but it was kind of complicated like that's why I usually do some small mockups with paper because I don't want to waste the foam that I have cutting something that I'm not going to really use uh, so I did my mockup in paper and I see okay I think that's the length that I want and I compare between the other ones that I did until I choose one that I think it's okay but in this case I think I just want to have a little bit thicker base so that's why I add just some paper of the sheet of paper that I've been using and it works like a charm now it's awesome it's huge yeah it was huge so this time I'm tracing my pattern not in foam, I'm tracing into Warbla because well I was lucky I bought some Warbla and I wanted to use it, it's my first time using Warbla and I know it's like pretty easy to give it shape and to put it together just with heat so that's why I wanted to use it and as you can see you can cut Warbla just with scissors so it was kind of fun so I traced this part and then I use the heat gun to put it together and well you don't really need glue to do that part at least with Warbler it just heat but can glue together two parts of Warbler so that's why it's pretty fun so I'm just trying to create the shape because I have a 2D pattern so it was flat but now I need to create a 3D volume also I need to seal the top part of this horn so I just as you can see I create like some squares and then I put it together with the horn that's how I seal my horn at the end I'm just gonna show you how I did one part and then the rest of the parts I did it exactly the same way just making smaller squares I would say but it was very fun and working with work is pretty cool and fun Okay, the next thing that I do was to add some filler because there were some parts that I didn't really like the end and I know I could solve that just adding some filler and sanding this part later. 
so that's what I'm doing right now I'm adding the filler that I need in the spaces that I think it will be useful and then I go with my sanding paper and sand as much as I want I also use the heat gun to create, change the shape of the horn a little bit more then uh, I try to add some details so I trace where I want to add these two lines my first time trying to do like a hole here was with the iron welder but it wasn't really giving that depth that's why I put some filler and then I tried to trace the line and it got a little bit more of depth still I'm not completely satisfied with this little detail um, the next thing I do is like sealing the the horn so I use my wood glue and I just wait it for it to dry and when it's dry I apply white painting and then I create like this new color that is kind of gray purple but that's the color that I wanted for the horn it was pretty hard to replicate so in some parts I already create some shadows because I couldn't I wasn't able to create the color that I wanted and at the beginning it was too light, then it was too dark, so I really struggled with this color. But at the end it looks pretty good, I really like it and I think it looks pretty awesome. And then to try to give more depth in the details that I create, I just apply a darker, again grey purple color. And then with that color that I create, I try to add some shadows to create some depth in the structure so it wouldn't look as plain. The next thing that I have to do that is the final thing that this helmet needs is to try to put something to attach my helmet to my horn to my helmet. So because the base that I created is not really curvy, it was pretty hard to put together and because I already painted I have to add a little bit more of foam. I have this foam clay that I bought for curiosity so I just use that to create more curves in that part then I do the same painting, gluing and when I'm happy with that I have my space to put some velcro. So I just applied some velcro and it looks awesome and it holds the horn together, it's perfect. The only complaint that I have of this armor is that the horn was too heavy so it makes the helmet tilt to the front so sometimes I couldn't see, that was a little bit annoying but it looks awesome so I love it. And this is how the armor looks in the convention day, it was awesome, I feel pretty awesome and it was a good day. Thank you for watching, I hope you really like it. Um, for me it was an awesome experience to try to do this cosplay, it was something big for me. Maybe for some of you it's not, but for other people it could be awesome. So if you like it, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And I also have other social media that you can follow me. So here are my links for my social media. So I hope you enjoy and keep watching my videos, thank you!